Um, my name is Do Not Obey, and let's get started. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome back. It's me, Do Not Obey, and let's just get right into this video. Now, this video is going to be about reincarnation. Now, I want to share with you guys um, a dream that I've had since I was a little girl, I believe at the age of three. Now, in this dream, I am a Caucasian woman. I would say I may be in my late 30s or probably early 30s, late 40s. And I can remember my style of clothes. I had on like the um, long dress with the white, some type of white shirt, but I remember that I hated it because I would always feel it pinching me right here at my throat. I could tell that my hair was pulled really tight, you know, like back in one of those like bun bonnet looking things, I don't know. And I had on some type of long johns up under my dress and then I had on these black and I call them witch hazel looking shoes right I'll try to throw in pictures here so you guys can kind of get the um, imagery of who I think I used to be before I was this black woman so my dream always starts off it never changes um, at the top of the steps now I have two kids and I believe a husband because I see a blonde hair blue-eyed little girl and I see a brown head, brown eyed little boy. I believe I was blonde head. And my husband, he's always sitting with a pipe and he has dark hair, dark brown hair. Now, as my dream always starts off, it's like I'm coming down the steps. Now, as I'm coming down the steps, there's like a fireplace that must that's, that's built right here. So it's gonna block me as I'm coming down, but I can still see into my living room, you know, so the kids would be sitting close to the fire. The husband was sitting behind the kids with the pipe, whatever, dude. It, it, I mean, like I've been having the same dream, right? So I always, I always get halfway down the steps. And before I get to the bottom, I can feel this dread come over me and I start to yell, no, get back. And then the fireplace just blows, right? Like everything just blows out of the fireplace. Everything's on fire. I remember coughing and then I wake up. Fast forward through life in this body, in this color, I would say when I was probably about, let's say back in 2004, I had a lady walk up to me out of nowhere. She said that she was a medium or a seer. And she kind of told me my dream but she explained it in a way of reincarnation. She goes, you know, you're an old soul. And I was like, well, what do you mean? I mean, I mean, I've heard that before, you know, old soul, but she said, you've been here more than once. She said, but the most time, I mean, the, the, the time that you remember being here the most is your most recent past life. And that's when you were a Caucasian woman and you lost your family in a house fire. Hence why I don't really like fire to this day. Um, and every time I've ever got around like fireworks, a grill or a lighter sometimes, I always get burned. And she said that I suffered burns, but I was the only one to survive. And I felt so guilty about it. So I just want to leave you guys with my reincarnation story. Um, in this next little flash, when you see me come back, I'm gonna bring you guys some examples of possible reincarnations. All right, so this is going to be brought to us by uh, the YouTube channel. It's Weird World. So if you guys want to check out all the full stories, I love their channel anyway. I'm subscribed to them. So let's just check out a few of reincarnation, right? Possible reincarnations, okay? I would like to say a special thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. Reincarnation is one of life's great mysteries where incredible. All right, let's fast forward it. Let's try to get to the first story. It 
said to her mother, my name used to be Daisy. A short time later, she again approached her mother and said, Robinson. Her mother asked what that meant and Olivia replied, it was my name and that used to be called Daisy Robinson. When she was... I've heard a lot of a lot of cases that mostly kids remember reincarnation, right? They remember being somebody else. It was really big um, in Unsolved Mysteries back, you know, when I was growing up. Two and a half, Olivia would often talk about past events. Her father asked her whether she used to have a different mummy and daddy, and she excitedly replied, yes. Another time, Olivia came up to her mother and told her, all the air came out of here, and her mother replied, out of where? And Olivia pointed to the middle of her body and said, here, and I died, but I don't like talking about it, and then left the room. Her mother was quite stunned because Olivia had had no contact with death other than seeing a dead frog once that her parents hadn't even told her was dead. One day after waking up from a nap, Olivia spoke to her mother again about 1787. Her mother asked her if she'd remembered any songs back then. And Olivia immediately said, London Bridge is falling down. Dude, this is crazy. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, front, falling down, Lord Jesus. Which was a favourite of hers. That nursery rhyme was in fact around in 1787. Another time, Olivia walked up to her mother and out of the blue said, 30 years old. Her mother said, who is 30 years old? And Olivia replied, I was when I died. I died because I didn't eat anything and then wandered away. Now, keep in mind, this could be, you know, all hypothetically, right? The mom could just be making all this up, right? But there, ha there has been cases where kids are too descriptive about places and times before their parents had even been born or even met to even know that they were going to create a child, right? Crazy. It's just crazy. It says, get away. Her mother then thought back to the voracious appetite Olivia had when she was a newborn, which could be explained by the starvation that she had suffered shortly before dying in her previous life. Olivia was eating a green apple one day and giggling to herself. She told her mother that Daisy Robinson had only eaten red apples, but now she only ate green apples. All right. Another time. All right, so we want to finish the rest of that. You know, we can check that story out. Let's fast forward and see. Catch another story. From 1787, that Olivia claimed she'd seen another. Let's see. Wow, this may be all about this one little girl. all the information from. Number two, Hannah, Canada. Okay. Hannah's father had hated hockey all of his life, which disappointed his father because he was passionate about it, and they never really bonded because of it. Even when Hannah's father first met her mother, he said they would get on okay if she never spoke of hockey. So Hannah grew up in a family that never spoke about hockey and never watched it on TV. As Hannah was growing up, she never had a babysitter until the age of nine, when her grandmother would be a babysitter. So Hannah had no contact with anybody that could have discussed hockey with her. Like her parents, Hannah had no interest in hockey. One day, when Hannah was three years old, she asked her father why her son didn't come around to take her to hockey games anymore. He asked her when her son had done this, and she replied, you know, Daddy, when I was an old lady. For a couple of months, she asked about her son and seemed frustrated that he wasn't. So she remembers having a son and everything, dude. Coming around. Hannah then gave details about her son, where she said he was skinny with red curly hair. <laughs> she talked about how her son wore a leather coat. She also said that he drove a white car with rust on it. 
what you do. Okay, I'm just saying this is all too descriptive. It's like either you were there, <laughs> like you were there, right? Like you, like it's like when you went to a place, right? And you were there, and it's like you're just telling the story over to somebody that wasn't there. You'd also talk about the arena, which surprised the father because as Hannah had never been to an arena and no one had ever discussed that word around her. Suddenly, Hannah stopped talking about her son and hockey games. And when her father later brought the subject up, he seemed to have no memory of them. So, what would possess a three-year-old child, especially a family who didn't even like hockey, to imagine that she'd been an elderly woman wanting her son to take her to hockey games? Now, before we get to number one... Tell me how you guys like that story, like... The first little girl, though, like she was, whew, this is crazy. All right. The full richness of the open internet freely. If you're addicted to Netflix like us, Surfshark is the only VPN which. Sorry about that. Let's see where we at, where we at, where we at. All right. Number one. Number one, Susan, United States. Susan was a clinical psychologist who from an early age regularly dreamt of being an African-American girl of seven. See, I believe that I was a Caucasian or a white female. It's not too far-fetched. Like, I'm just now seeing these. I seen the title, I emailed the title to myself and it got me, you know, you know, wanting to talk about my story. So you guys are getting my natural reaction. Like, I didn't even know this was on here. I promise. Seven or eight, walking down a dirt road. Susan, who is Caucasian, grew up in a mountainous area, but the environment of her childhood dreams were different. It is hot, humid, flat, and very dusty. Susan believes it was probably in the Southeast United States. As she was walking, she looks down at the dry skin of her hands and thinks they look ashy. Then a car comes along. With and that's true. Black folks, honey, we do get ashy. It's not racist. It's not something to be ashamed of. Like, she appears to be from the 1940s and she is suddenly pulled into the car. There were two white men in the car that appear to be in their 20s or 30s. She remembers the bench seat, the lines of the upholstery, and the dusty floorboard there in the car she was assaulted mm. and lost her. so yeah so basically we can say that this young little black girl's life was taken um through racial discrimination allegedly you know hypothetically and maybe she got a chance to live as the color that took her to learn a lesson from that side maybe we all have been every different color to learn lessons but i don't know if we're learning any not I'm learning some. I know most of y'all that watch me, I'm pretty sure y'all are learning some, but I'm just saying the world in general, right? <laughs> Ooh, life. The memory of this event is as vivid to Susan as any other event in her childhood. She also had repetitive dreams about the event. In some of them, she re-experienced the assault, while in others, she observed what happened from above. She didn't think any of the dreams were nightmares, as they were very realistic, but they frequently woke her up. Susan could think of nothing. Okay, I never felt that my dream of me being a, you know, a white lady, a, um, a white lady running down the steps in my home. I never felt that it was a nightmare. I just felt like it was an experience or something that happened, like something I actually went through. It was like a reminder, you know, like something you push back and you want to forget. Thing in a childhood environment that could have triggered the dreams. There were African Americans living in a town that you grew up in, but there was no racial unrest. In discussions with black friends, they confirmed that the expression ashy was used when their skin became dry. Facts. Susan feels her vivid dreams have had no negative effect on her as she grew older. And she has had no relationship problems with her husband, nor has she suffered any anxiety problems, but claims 
that she has always had an exaggerated startle response. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Like the the sec uh, the, this last one, I'm sorry, tongue tied threw me for a loop because I feel in the, the past life I remember. Now I could have been here billions of times, dude. I don't know, but I can honestly tell you that I do remember being a white woman before I became this girl right here. Okay. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know if you guys have any, you know, you think you're reincarnated or if you guys have any kids that have said some things that make you go, hmm, just saying, do not obey. Stay woke. Peace.